ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ if you take a bottle <coughs> of water and fill it completely not even a bubble is available fully and after that tighten it properly and move the bottle will the water inside move no because there is no space and if the bottle is half filled or three fourth filled and then you move the bottle the water will move because there is a space is it it so what causes the movement the space and we are not aware of the space like <clears throat> so many of us are there so we are many this manyness is possible on account of one space if there is no space between or among us can we be many not stuck together we will be one see like take our palm before the fingers begin erupting out of the palm palm is one now in that palm the space is introduced so the same palm has become fingers so are the fingers something other than the palm think so where from the multiplicity comes multiplicity comes when space is available <clears throat> and what is the space we have seen in the first example of the bottle and water what is the space emptiness wherever there is emptiness or space movement is possible see friends now <clears throat> we'll go step by step i see this object any object is seen by us as other than me only because we accept the space between me and the object see then what happens the movement starts as i told you the bottle example when there is a space there is movement possible now this object is inert but i am sentient then who will move object will move or i will move then i move and when i move when i interact with that object i interact with the object that object is good or bad source of joy or misery it is essential or not essential i like it or dislike it depending on these interactions with the object my actions will begin so where are the interactions interactions are happening in the mind 
is it interactions don't happen in the body they happen in the mind and then that mind propels us into activity got it see now if we are wise enough that we see the object and stop there meaning we don't interact so no interaction means no movement of the mind when the mind is not moving it is fulfillment movement of the mind is a sign of incompleteness see anything which is finite is incomplete anything which is finite is not one but many when anything is many repetition is possible where there is repetition mind is born see so engage or give the mind an object which is not finite and which is the one what will happen the mind will stop moving see for example i chant lord's name shri ram shri ram shri ram shri ram it can be repeated it became four times only because between the two sri ramas there was a space now second experiment make the silence as an object of your knowledge sound sir many mind will remain created silence is one mind dissolves when we say mind dissolves does it mean mind is something solid when we say ice dissolves in the water what does it mean solidified water is ice ice will not dissolve in petrol it will dissolve only in water is it not similarly solidified consciousness is mind and what is the ice and what is the water water with shape and size is ice ice without shape and size is water consciousness with shape and size is mind mind without shape and size is consciousness sounds have shape and size sounds are many sounds are loud sounds are soft silence is one when we practice this make silence as the object of your knowledge
net result will be mind will be in a process of dissolving and disappearing in the consciousness. But who wants to die? Nobody wants to die. Mind also doesn't want to die. What the mind does? Go in the past memories. Or create non-existing problems of the future and try to solve them. Because when the mind is in the utter present, there is no movement. Go in the past, go in the future, there is a movement. Wherever there is a movement, there is mind. Where there is no movement, is consciousness. So the space between the thought and the action If the thought doesn't lead to action, the thought dissolves and the mind disappears. See, it is something like this, where we are sitting, all of us have got this habit of talking whether others want to listen or not, like I am doing now. Keep on talking. And we know it is not necessary. Yet it comes as a pressure from inside. I think I must say. And then we say also, I know I should not say, but then why don't you keep your mouth shut? Because the mind is so strong that the momentum of the mind creates action out of thought. Thought is a knowledge. Speaking is action. So what is the difference between the knowledge and the action? This little bit of gap wherein when we come under the influence of the momentum of the thought, action happens. So what we will have to do, do not allow the mind to gather momentum in thinking. All those people who are constantly talking to themselves, particularly oldies like us, constantly talking, And once we become aware of this, you become aware of anger, anger will disappear. You become aware of talking yourself to yourself, that talking will disappear. Because the momentum of thought process is so strong, we get carried away by that thought process. Then, what should be done? Arrest the momentum of thought that is gathered by the mind. When this happens, mind is infinite. Minds are not many. Like, Gold is infinite. Ornaments are many. See? Mind is one. That one common mind makes the functions of the life continue. We 
when we are in deep sleep that time we are one with the total mind that time individual mind is not born what is the individual mind same like what is an ornament ornament is gold plus name form utility personality many attributes so gold with attributes is ornaments mind with the attributes is i versus you otherwise what is the difference between you and me zero see suppose we are fighting with each other and something happens and we fall asleep totally deep sleep then my feet are on your face you will not argue your hand is in my pocket i will not argue all the differences have disappeared but we continue to exist in the this undifferentiated knowledge doesn't allow the space to happen now why we are separate from each other because of the space then what is to be done be very attentive when we fall in the waters with the help of the water only we come out is it not who is helping us there suppose we fall in the river or sea with the same water where we have fallen we take the help and come out exactly the same way we have fallen into manyness because of the space now make use of the same space to come out of the space and what is that make space as the object of knowledge and what is space space is absence so make absence as an object of your awareness so sri ram sri ram sri ram three times now sri ram when you make silence as the object of knowledge your movement of the body also stop your breathing becomes extremely slow and shallow you can start experiencing the blood flow in your veins you start hearing the heart beats because you have withdrawn from multiplicity many of us have this experience that <clears throat> when we are listening to satsang things are very clear and obvious yes it is so but when we are all by ourselves then the volcano start erupting mind becomes more intolerant 
when we are all by ourselves becomes more violent see why this happens there was a seeker he went to a great master in india in varanasi and uh, he said sir i am not able to chant the lord's name continuously when i am chanting the lord's name the mind runs here and there i can't focus on that i don't know what i should do so the mahatma said you are a fool chant after me and it is now repeat after me so the master says say sri ram jai ram jai jai ram the other the boy said okay sri ram jai ram jai jai again say sri ram jai ram jai jai ram the boy repeats sri ram jai ram jai jai ram then the master says get away from here don't come back now that boy goes away and his mind is continuously chanting the lord's name and it continues for a day or two a week two weeks and one day it comes in his mind hey i can now chant the lord's name without interruption the moment this thought comes it stops again the worldly thoughts overpowering and the chanting has come to a halt again that boy gets frustrated goes back to the master sir after that day when i came i started chanting the lord's name and it continued for two weeks but again it stopped why this happened so the master said look here my dear child you were not chanting i was chanting through your mind the moment you had that notion that now i can chant lord's name clearly the moment you entered i vacated <laughs> this is exactly what happens in satsang when our mind is so cooperative so attentive everything is heard so beautifully clearly so there it becomes very obvious very simple but again when we are by ourselves okay now i want to do meditation the moment i factor comes all the mess begins so this happens not out of knowledge but out of the power the teacher is sharing his inner strength with us now where from the teacher gets it he gets it through wisdom therefore if we are sitting quiet in the lap of the lord every day you will get a different distinct approach to the reality it is not a mechanical drill meditation can never never be repeated meditation is not like a military drill by the left quick march no like you drive to your workplace from your home every day you are the same your car is the same your point of origin is the same your destination is the same and yet every day the drive is different is it not the drive from what we think we are to in reality what we are this journey is meditation and this journey is not spatio temporal journey we don't travel distances and we don't take time the gps tells us it will take you 11 minutes 15 seconds no this 
this can come if we become more and more subjective in analyzing our experiences. One person asked me this question, Swamiji, how much time it takes to realize? So I asked him, are you married? He said, yes. Then uh, after marriage, what are you? He said, husband. Before marriage, what were you? Man. Now what is the distance between the husband and the man? How much time, effort, energy and distance the husband has to cross to be man? That much time, distance, effort, we need to know our essential self. So what will be the meditation? Meditation is the husband, in fact, is not real. The man is real. So what we have to do? Don't take the husband seriously. So when you are in front of your wife, when she is talking, you keep quiet. And when she is quiet, you should not talk. Husband becomes man. See, friends, and this can happen only when we start. Every day you will get something different approach to the reality. Now, I'll tell you something, be very attentive. We get lost in this world because of logic and reason. The logic or the cause and effect is an illusion. Cause and effect is not real. And what is the reality? Reality is beyond cause and effect. And where we are caught up, we are caught in cause and effect. Why, why, why? Because the sky is too high. Now, for example, because of the eyes, we can see colors and forms, is it not? If you are in a dark room, sometimes it happens, you go to the ophthalmologist and he is checking your eyesight and that very moment the electricity fails and you are in a dark chamber. In that dark <coughs> room, can the doctor check whether our eyes are functional or not? <coughs> so the functioning of the eyes is determined by the colors and forms and the colors and forms are established because of the functioning of the eyes. Who is who? They are mutually dependent. First principle. Now second step. The colors and forms and the vision. Now we analyze further. Colors and forms are many. They are constantly changing. Vision is one. For the blue color, there is not a blue vision. For a purple color, there is not a purple vision. For a green color, there is not a green vision. Vision does not have color. For the uh, huge things, we don't require a huge vision. For a minute thing, we don't require a minute vision. In short, the objects, colors and forms are many, but vision is one. The objects, colors and forms are different from each other, but vision eliminating them is one. And when objects are completely removed, Nothing happens to the vision. 
So, vision is the cause, colors and forms are the effect. Cause is one, effects are many. Be very attentive. Cause is subtle, effects are gross. In other words, cause when grossified, it is called as the effect. Gold has no shape. When the gold takes a shape, it is called as an ornament. Think. So, first step. Colors and forms, they dissolve in the vision. Now go further. We are reducing the space. Vision and the colors and form, there is a space. We have reduced the space. We have left the colors and forms and come to the vision. Now next step. The space between the mind and the sense organs. Are there five different minds to function through five different sense organs? Only one mind. Sense organs are object specific. Eyes can see only colors and forms. Ears can hear only the sounds. But the mind is not the object specific. It is common. So what are the, our vision or the sense organs? Mind grossified is sense organs. Therefore, when the eyes are non-functional, nothing happens to the mind. See this journey, objects to sense organs, sense organs to the mind. And in between there is nothing, the nothing is space. Nothing means no cause, no effect. Now after we come to the mind, then next step. What is mind? Mind is an expression of life. See. So when life manifests, it is called as mind. When the mind becomes unmanifest, it is called as life. So in the deep sleep, there is life, but there is no manifest mind. So when the mind remains unmanifest, it conducts the business of life. And when the mind becomes manifest, it becomes a personality. Go last step. This life principle alone supports waking, dream, deep sleep and samadhi. This is the ultimate truth. And therefore, to get rid of the space, take use or make use of the same space. Now start making space as an object of awareness. How and what will happen? See. Now work on it. Space supports or all the objects, all the shapes, but none of the shape influences the space. Space supports all the objects, but none of the objects can disturb the space. So now we start playing space space. What it is like being space? If we really take the position of the space, 
what will happen? No gross object will disturb us. Neither the sounds will disturb us. None of the four, five objects will disturb us. First step. The whole waking world will have no influence on us. Then we go one step further. Where from this gross space has come out? What is the source of the gross space? Then we come to know mind is the source of the space. When the mind is totally enfolded as in deep sleep, where are we? What are we? When are we? How are we? Nothing. Because we are existing in the space. And the space has disappeared. Now where the space has gone? So the gross space is nothing but the expression of the mind. Therefore, where is the whole world? It is only in the mind. That which doesn't enter the mind doesn't exist for us. <clears throat> like something bad has happened and we do not know and we are having our nice party drinking and dancing and everything going on. And something very bad has happened. We will not be miserable. Because that event has not entered in our mind. It doesn't exist for us. Be attentive. When that event is known to us and yet we don't get disturbed then we are really practicing space. Because space supports all the disturbances. Volcanoes, hurricanes, infernos, earthquakes, nothing happens to the space. So we support all the experiences of life. But don't get influenced by any one of them. This is the first step in conquering the space. Then this next step comes in our understanding. Where from this space has come? So this space has come from the mind. So we now jump out of the grass space go to the mind space. Like the gross space has the gross contents, mind space has the thought contents. All thoughts are supported by the mind space. Mind space is not influenced by any thought. Like space is not good or bad. Similarly, the mind is also not good and bad. All the thoughts, whatever they may be, noble, ignoble, divine, devilish, creative, destructive, all thoughts are supported by the same mind. So next step will be, no thought should disturb us. <clears throat> Then be indifferent and to practice that being indifference is the technique which we told you, stop talking to yourself. You cannot think without words. Words create speech. We are non-stop talking to ourselves. Practice this. 
whenever we get time, start with a very short spell, 10 seconds. Do not talk to yourself. This is the thing, practice. Like a child learns walking. Child doesn't start running right after birth. First the child starts walking in the air, lying back on the back and moving the hands and legs then he comes to discuss, come on here, I am not moving anywhere. Then he slowly turns. Then he comes on his stomach. Then like a reptile, he starts wriggling and moving. Then slowly he comes on his knees and on his palms. Like a mammal, slowly he starts moving here and there. Then he takes the help of the wall or the curtain holds on to the sari of the mother, slowly gets up, starts walking. Step by step, he doesn't give up. Imagine, if a child took the first step and he has fallen, and therefore he gave up walking, can anybody learn walking in life? Don't give up. Start slowly. One person asked me in one of the international yoga conferences, Somebody, your technique, uh, what yoga you call this? Don't talk to yourself. What is this yoga? I said, I call this as a commode yoga. What? I said, yes, commode yoga. The moment you land in the morning on the commode, from there you start. During your commode business is over, do not talk to yourself. You have learnt everything. See friends, as a result, the mind will start dissolving in consciousness. See? Then the next step comes, where from the mind space has come? The raw space has come from the mind. The where from the mind space has come. Mind space has come from the life. Okay. And what is life? Life is a common denominator. Hunger, thirst, desire, anger, greed, frustration, envy, jealousy, pain, Pleasure is common to total life. See friends, such a person who rises above the mind space come to this Chidakasha the conscious space, the conscious space alone expresses as life Life alone expresses as mind, mind alone expresses as the world, the world alone creates an individuality, I versus you. When the GPS map is clear, Then at any moment, whether you are taking food, you are talking to people, you are going for a walk, any moment, you are in tune. We may be talking to the world, but our tuning with the divine is never corrupted. See, like the other day, we saw somewhere, 
one person who was riding a bicycle and uh, he has taken his hands up both the hands and he was dying now he's become perfect balance he doesn't have to worry initially to maintain the balance he has to hold on to this the handle and see that he doesn't move this way that way but once he became perfect he doesn't require any support exactly the same way once we get the knack of it spiritual life is a knack a knack cannot be taught the other day on a swimming pool husband wife and their one daughter and one small child small son probably husband and wife they were in their maybe uh, mid 30s wife was a good swimmer the daughter who was about 10 years or so was also a very good swimmer and a small child 6 months the mother took the child kept on the edge of the swimming pool and from the water said come and the child jumped into the swimming pool and started swimming no problem so the wife was teasing the husband your son is better than you you can't swim and he is able to swim learn something from him swimming cannot be taught you have to have the knack of it exactly the same way spiritual life is a knack it can't be taught you have to learn in kaivalya upanishad a mantra comes right in the beginning where the student goes to the teacher and says adihi bhagavan brahma vidyam varishtham sada sanvihi sevyamanam nigudham o teacher kindly teach me brahma vidya the ultimate wisdom ultimate knowledge and the teacher says shraddha bhakti dhyana yoga davai you learn i can teach you nobody can teach anything to anybody and if we are bent on learning nobody can stop us from learning so don't go on hanging on to the guru let the ability to learn be invoked so the real spiritual practice is this we keep on learning from everything in our life see now the example which i gave you about the water bottle you all must have had that seen how many times number of times but did this strike that when the water bottle is filled and if you move the water bottle the water doesn't move See, everywhere there are examples for us to learn, and we can learn once this vision is developed. Changing the vision from the relative standpoint, go to the absolute standpoint. Like some of the people, students, they ask us this question. Swami ji, you give so many examples. Please tell us which are the books that you refer. <laughs> Then I tell them, you are one book, because I am learning from you. See, friends, like this morning when we were walking, myself and Arvin, I was telling him, I say, see, he was telling about a small child. first day the child came for the lecture she was taking her uh, shawl and spreading and slipping again getting up and in between the lecture the things were happening and as a rule i don't get disturbed so when i was not disturbed nobody could get disturbed the child was playing 
Second day again the child came. But then second day she did not come in the front and all that. She sat behind and slowly she was playing and slept. Third day she came, sat quiet. All through the lecture. No movement, no nothing. So when he told me, I said, do you know what happens? If anybody or anything which is agitating around us, and if we keep our cool, our coolness influences those agitations and those agitations are quieted because we are all connected. If we are not connected, you will not understand anything what I am talking. Words are only the means. Connections are not means. It is reality. See, therefore, when we go to the periphery of a giant wheel in uh, Wimbley, England, you must have seen, there is a huge giant wheel. And if you sit in those cradles, when it moves, you get some kind of happening in your stomach. Oh, that's moving. But if you come to the hub, the center, around which the whole wheel is moving, nothing happens. Exactly the same way. When we are living at the periphery of our personality, our possessions, our relations, our past, our achievements, our unborn future. We are living at the periphery of our personality. Come to the center. Periphery depends on the center. Center doesn't depend on the periphery. Come back to yourself. Periphery moves because there is a space. Center, there is no space. Because center is the space. And this center is such a center which doesn't have the periphery. Be very attentive. I as Swami Anubhavananda is the center with the periphery. But I as your friend, now my periphery has increased. I have broken the barrier of individuality and merge with you. We go further. I, the center, break the barrier of all the limitations. Then it is the same life. It is expressing in and through the totality. So wherever there is life, there I am. Because now there is no periphery. There is no circumference. Center without the circumference is our divine nature. Come to discover this. The word used is discover. It is covered with wrong notions. Wrong notions have no cause. Wrong notions are the cause. One day, one girl in, in uh, New Zealand probably, somewhere. We are going towards the sea, downward we have to walk down. And I was feeling lazy. I said, come on, I will not come. No, no, Swamiji, see how beautiful it is looking. It is so nice, beautiful it looks. Please come with us. I said, look here. Anything which looks beautiful is never beautiful. 
What do you mean? I said, for example, you look beautiful. And thereafter, for three days, she did not talk to me. <laughs> now, we have that notion that I am beautiful, I am handsome, I am intelligent, I am rich, I am good. These are our notions. And with these notions, we continue ourselves. See? And the notions create the world around us. If you see the picture of Jesus in the original land where he was born, all the features are sharp and face is oblong, fair complexion. You start migrating from that place toward the east, come to India, Jesus becomes like Guru Vairappa, Bhagwan Krishna. <laughs> Then you go further to the Far East, go to China, Jesus becomes crying Buddha. Only one hair hanging. <laughs> Buddha had so much of hair. This, uh, Jesus had a lot of hair on his beard. He had bright big eyes. Chinese two slits. <laughs> so we all have different notions and notions have no logic. So, breaking these notions, living this notional life and coming to the actual reality is the spiritual path. And what creates all these differences? Only because of the space. Conquer the space. In a defense organization, one day, one of the person came for lecture and he took me to show. Finally, this is the defense um, space research center. So I went there. Very high security. Because the person was himself the in charge brigadier, he had the freedom to take me. I went there. And he showed me. He took the phone. He says, how oh, you take that phone? I took this. Then he spoke to me. Hello, Swamiji, how are you? I said, I am very fine, thank you. Then he put on the phone. He said, do you know what happened? I said, no. When I spoke to you, my voice has gone to the satellite. From there it was rebounded and came to you. This kind of research we are doing here. Then as a standard military practice, he asked me any questions. I said, yes, I got one question. What is that? What is the name of your organization? He said, Defense Space Research Organization. I said, defense, I understand. What is the meaning of space? What you spoke to me was about the satellite which is hanging in the space. What you spoke to me was a phone which is on the land. And what you spoke to me is their words. There is no space involved anywhere. So please explain what is space. Like if we have got a potato research institution, so you have to define what is a potato, isn't it? You cannot take a pineapple to do research in potato research institution. You have to define that a potato is a tuber, it is not a root. It is not a fruit. And then only you can conduct research on potato. In the same manner, when you say this is a space research institution, please define space. He said, nobody has asked such a funny question. <laughs> Please, friends. Space is just a projection of the mind. And mind is expression of life. Life is manifestation of the consciousness. The consciousness alone is the truth. And this consciousness is a solid space. Space because it contains everything. Solid because 
other than it, there is nothing. Like, gold is a solid space for all the ornaments. All the ornaments are unmanifest within the gold. They become manifest, again become unmanifest. In the same manner, out of this solid conscious space, the whole world comes out. Again it goes back. Again it comes out. Again it goes back. This is how space is the most interesting topic. You contemplate, reflect on it again and again. You will disappear. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om